Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn, and as a millennial and as a YouTuber, I speak to about 55% of my audience as millennials. And I believe that we are one of the most misunderstood generations of our society, you know. We have a lot of uh, issues, we have a lot of struggles ahead of us, we have a lot of problems. But we also have a lot of people out there that stereotype and that spread misconceptions about us. There are so many videos out there that are purely out there to make us feel worse about ourselves. That are purely out there to make other generations feel better about themselves. Why can't they be more like us? Say the <laughs> uh, generations that came before the millennials, for example the yuppies. Why can't they do what we did? And the thing is our society has changed and we live in a new world and we have new challenges ahead of us. And the issue is we have all learned to respond to these challenges slightly differently. And I'm going to show you the issue of the alt-right, the social justice warrior and the overworked millennial. And I'm going to show you which of these categories you belong to. And I'm going to show you what you need to get ahead of, what you need to deal with to truly grow and to truly actualize yourself in today's society. And I tell you this as a person who is still trying to make it, as a person who is still searching for an answer, still searching for how to make it, how to succeed, how to live a good life as a millennial, as a person born in the early 1990s, in the middle of uh, what we call the millennial generation. And the thing is here, uh, we're all coming into this from different angles. We have the alt-right, we have the social justice warrior, and we have the overworked millennial. Three groups that have very little in common, that have very different ways of looking at situation. And often we tend to be struggling to understand one another. We struggle to understand one another because we believe so much in our own way. We believe so much in our own situation at the expense of the other. I believe that the social justice warrior is the representative of the outcast, the person that feels like an outsider of society, unseen, unheard, never given a fair chance to make something out of themselves, marginalized, looking for opportunities, feeling like society is unfair. I believe that the Pepe's, Pepe the Frog, the alt-right, represent the people that struggle to feel heard, the middle childs of the millennials, the people that come in between, the people that come with the desire to be seen and heard while other people are bickering. You know, the people, the average, the every people, the people that just pass by with normal average grades, normal average results. No scholarships, no job positions open to them because they're not at the height of society and they're not bad enough to get by on pity. And here the thing is, the issue is, uh, Pepe's grow up and you know they have become such a relevant force politically today because they are such a big force of society. There are so many people that are just average. So many people that can relate to being sidelined for just being average. Neither seen for being amazing and neither seen for being pitied. Neither marginalized nor at the top of society. And here the thing is, there is, there is a group here at the top of society, at the top of the millennial food chain. And I call them the overworked millennials. I believe that those that have come to succeed in the millennial society, you know, in the society for millennials, are the millennials that have come to compromise their own needs and to slavishly put out their energy for other people to use and exploit. You know, the people that gladly uh, decide and agree to not have any lunch breaks because their boss wants them to work more. You know, the people in society that gladly work 60 hours a week. You know, the people that never turn off their phones. You know, the people that always answer when their boss calls. You know, who, the one who always jumps at every work email. The person that is always trying to make themselves available. And I have found that the Enneagram is an apt system for explaining these three drives, these three groups, and just how they feel and why they have emerged. I believe the Enneagram 4 is the perfect example of what we all love to bash, you know, the special snowflake, you know, the social justice warrior. We all love to be annoyed with them for we look at them as babies, we look at them as crybabies, we call them sensitive. We, Say we mock them for feeling misunderstood. We mock them for not working hard enough. And you know, we look at 
the same with the same disregard often towards the Pepe's, you know, society has the same disregard towards the Pepe's, you know, we say, hey, if you care so much about being seen and heard, why don't you speak out more for yourself? We mock, you know, the nice guy that never gets picked by the girl. We not we mock the person that just is a good guy, a decent person, just average for not trying harder. And we idealize, you know, those at the top. We idealize those that have programmed themselves to never think of themselves. We idealize the people that are working themselves to death. And here's the thing, like, we all have like symbol figures that represent these people. Like Donald Trump, the perfect symbol for this Enneagram 3 attitude, you know. The Enneagram 3 is neither the hardest worker, neither the symbol of success, and neither the symbol of failure. The Enneagram 3 is the performer. The Enneagram 3 is the person that just wants attention, you know, the just person that just wants to be heard and seen for who they are. And the Enneagram 2, what is the symbol of the Enneagram 2? What is the symbol of the overworked millennial? I believe that's the person like, uh, say, the person that embodies the spirit of Elon Musk, you know, the person that only lives to work, only lives to do something for other people, the person that never does something for themselves, and the person that feels strained and exhausted trying to do all of this. You know, I worry, like I look at these people and I cannot idealize them, I can admire them. But I also worry, I worry what would happen if they gave up? What would happen if they stopped working? What would happen if they stopped putting themselves out there? What would happen if they got burnt out? And I look at all these generations and I see this vast potential. And I see so much potential in all of these generations. And the thing is, we have to address the root issues, the root blocks that are in the way of these, these groups and their chances at success. What keeps the Enneagram 4 from success is this envy towards those that have made something for themselves, you know, the people that have created. The Enneagram 4 needs to nurture that own creative gift. Make something of your own. Build the future businesses where the marginalized can succeed. Create the apps where the marginalized have a chance. Create the communities, the institutions, the inventions that the marginalized need. You know, create what it is you need. Don't take it from others. And I believe the Enneagram 3 requires needs to start speaking out for themselves more. Instead of just wanting to be heard, instead of just making a fool out of yourself to get other people to look at you, express who you are. Find a medium on YouTube, on Twitch, where you can speak out for yourself, where you can be heard, where you can express yourself and show other people who you are. And you know, the overworked millennial, you have to learn boundaries. You have to find people that genuinely care for and value your gifts. You have to find workplaces that will give you something beyond an internship. You have to find people that will respect you, that will admire and appreciate your gifts, and that will nurture you. You have to find places where you can channel your gifts towards something you are genuinely passionate about, something you genuinely care about. And workplaces have to change, society has to change, and we have to change it. We have to make it so that we can make it in today's society. And the thing is, the reason we don't, the reason we can't, the reason why we struggle so much as millennials is simple, because this society was not built for us. This society was built for those that came before us. And this society does not address what we need. It does not give us what we require. It won't help us. <laughs> and that's why we have to think outside the box. That's why we have to stop judging each other. That's why we have, stop, have to stop these petty conflicts. And that's why we have to take a look inside ourselves and realize that our drives are not as political or grandiose as we might think. Our drives are so often deeply psychological and so related to how we feel about ourselves, our projected insecurities that we throw at other people. And what we say about others and what we judge and mock in others, it's such a reflection of how we feel about ourselves. And that is why we need to study Carl Jung, that's why we need to look at ourselves and our true values to truly understand ourselves and to truly see what our true potential is. That's all I have to say about this topic. Thank you all for watching this video. And if you support this video and if you want to do something, feel free to hit me up on Discord or send me an email. 
because I want to do something, I want to question, I want to challenge, and I want to learn more. I don't know how to make it yet. I don't know how to change the world. I just know we have to change it somehow to make it.